Hello everybody, this is Mystic38 in the, with the third in the series of random technical videos. Alright, so Sonar X3 introduces support for VST3 uh, for the first time in, in Sonar and the uh, VST editors for the motif based um, synths from Yamaha are VST3 based. So what I'm going to show you here is how to set up uh, the editor for uh, the S70 XS, which is the synth I have. Um, and I think uh, exactly the same procedure will work equally as well for uh, the motif based products that have this same type of VST editor. Uh, there are some issues that won't operate fully as planned um, that's currently being investigated. Um, so the way I'm going to set this up here is exactly how you would set up a classic uh, VST editor for a an external synth. Okay, all right. So the very first thing uh, to do is to go into Sonar's preferences. So push the P. Uh, go into MIDI devices, and here you want to see that on the input and the output you have your uh, synth checked. All right, that's so data can go to uh, the synth and from the synth, and also ensure, that I'm sure you know that uh, these synths have five USB MIDI ports. Uh, I think the second one is for it to be used as a remote control for your door. Um, uh, the third one is a control service, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so you the fourth USB MIDI port here uh, S70XS-4, you need to ensure that you do not check those either for input or output. If you check those ports, then uh, Sonar will grab the port and the VST editor will not be able to communicate with the synth. Okay. Now, typically for a VSTi, you would not need to uh, check uh, the keyboard port here, which is port one, um, but because we're going to use this solely as an editor, uh, we need uh, this port uh, available to Sonar. Okay, so we'll do that. Then we'll come over to the browser, look at the instrument plugins, and the external synth will pull up the uh, instantiation options. That's a great word, isn't it? Uh, for the editor. Um, just make sure you do not select it as a simple instrument track. Um, as I alluded to earlier, there are some issues that keyboard data will not pass from Sonar through to the VST editor and then onwards to the synth, uh, nor will uh, data uh, come back via the VST editor. So we're going to set the editor up solely for control of the synth and then we're going to manually uh, allocate uh, the MIDI and the audio ports for in and out. Okay, So it really doesn't matter whether you have enable MIDI out or first audio out or all audio out um, but you want a MIDI source in a synth track folder and we'll just click OK. Alright, so now we have uh, the VST editor is open You'll notice it says offline, and just like when using standalone mode, you need to come file, setup, and the very first time that you do this, these ports here uh, may not be identified, and in fact, the USB detail may be off, and you would get this warning sign up here. So put USB detail on, you will notice that there's drop down windows for. Uh, port 4, which is the communication path from the edit to the synth, um, but port 1, which is keyboard uh, data port, uh, there's nothing there for MIDI out. It says not assigned, and there's nothing in the drop down menu, okay? So at this point, you would set up the sync features that you would require if you have a setup already on the synth. You want this to come from the synth to the PC, like that. In this case, I don't have anything set up, so I'm just going to uh, do the synchronization to ship from the computer over to um, over to the synth. Now hit start. 
and synchronizing. Okay. Doop -de -doop -de -doo. Doop -de -doop -de -doo. Elevator music. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two. Uh, one. All right. Da -da 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 -da. I hope I have the synth turned on. Ah, there we go. <laughs> right. So you notice here I can click this and nothing's happening. So we will now go over to the MIDI source. It's over here. And let me set my options to I.O. And uh, since the synth is on the other side of the room, I'm actually going to use um, my virus TI is my keyboard controller. So that's the input. And then on the output for the source track, the default, of course, because this is believes it's a VSTI, uh, is uh, for the, the S, uh, in this case, 70X as VST1. That will not work because, as I said, you can't pass keyboard data from Sonar to the VST editor and onwards to the synth. So set the regular port uh, for the synth, which is uh, USB port 1, just as if you were using this in standalone mode. Okay, So I've selected that, and I will go to channel 1, because I have this set up in voice mode in, uh, let's just hope that, ah, there we go. So we've got a piano going, isn't that lovely? And just to make sure I'm not cheating here, Oh, let's pick up some, what should we do, some, some cello. All right, so that sounds pretty good. So that's a MIDI source track. Um, obviously, if you go to multi-mode, uh, which you can, um, it, you can just synchronize yet again. So all of this bit works exactly in the same way as if it were the standalone instantiations uh, and in fact uh, in a post with with Yamaha there seems to be some mix up here in that it's some uh, hybrid mix of the standalone version and the VST editor version uh, and I wish I hadn't turned it to multi-mode but um, never mind let's go back to voice so okay so that all works let's go back to voice mode just for grins um, all right so if you're in multi-mode, you can, of course, include additional uh, MIDI source tracks and direct them to the individual uh, channels uh, of the synth. So you can have up to, obviously, the 16 um, uh, channels that it supports. So now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, do two things. We're going to insert an audio track uh, for the return um, uh, from the synth. Uh, in my particular case, I have a Moto 808 Mark III hybrid, so I have a multi-channel, um, I have a multi-channel audio device, and so I can actually pull up uh, the stereo track for um, the input, which is coming directly from the synth. Um, if you uh, have a just a two-channel uh, I/O card, you know you would obviously run everything through your mixer till you get your sounds right and then lay the tracks in one at a time you know to print to audio okay um so if i was to hit a record arm there hopefully there we go when a cello plays something then something comes in the audio track so that's not too bad so i've created this audio track let's move it to the folder all right and we keep everything neat now the other thing that you can also do of course is we could, if we wished, and we do, so we shall, we will insert a MIDI track, and we'll use this as a MIDI return track. Um, so what I will uh, demonstrate is a little extra uh, ability here, just to make sure that you understand that all the features that you want out of the setup are there, um, is we will go into this fancy cello thing here, and we will enable the ARP, we'll turn that on, and we'll, we'll turn MIDI on, MIDI out, sorry, for the ARP. And we'll put that to, say, channel 2, because we're using channel 1 going in. Okay? So, now then, 
So therefore, if I come over here, and go to the input, will pull from the, not from the VST of course, directly from the synth, MIDI channel two, okay? Then this, um, we ought to get data there too, I would think. So let's just see, see what actually happens here if I go. I didn't actually see anything there on the um, didn't see anything there on the uh, on the return track. I wonder what we got. We got MIDI out on channel two. We have the ARP on. Um, doo -ba -doo -ba -doo. Ah, input channel two. <laughs> there we go. That's working quite a bit better, isn't it? So. Um, just to prove the caption of the data here, uh, I've armed these two tracks and let's just record a bit. Okay. God, the metronome is damn loud. So if I move this down here, you can see that we've got, we have our audio track and, you know, we have the MIDI data coming back from an ARP track. So, um, we have a track folder, and so, uh, you know, what we now have is all the abilities of the standalone editor to adjust setups and whatever, but the distinct benefit that now we can, uh, that just when we close this project and reopen it, the setup is automatically saved, and you do not have to um, go off and save it separately as a setup uh, within the editor here. Of course, if you want to do this standalone for a performance or something later, then you would probably do that. But anyway, um, this is a big improvement. Uh, I believe that um, uh, if you've got a motif, you'd be able to use this in exactly the same way. Feel free to stick some comments in there. But in the case of getting this working, the key thing was to ensure that in the preferences uh, that uh, the um, the USB MIDI ports for the VST editor uh, were not selected by Sonar. I, of course, did that because I was overthinking the problem. So more for me. Anyway, I uh, hope this helps somebody. Uh, yet another random video from me. This is Mystic38, out. <laughs>